orthopedic blast injuries. This is from the Orthopedic Trauma Association Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series. Um, this is the second part of our uh, presentation. Um, this is put together by the OTA Disaster Preparedness Committee, Drs. Bourne, McAndrew, Mamzak, Pagankop, Richardson, Teague, and Walensky. I'm Saki Brahman narrating, and in the first part of our uh, lecture, we talked mostly about sources of blast injuries, uh, industrial accidents, uh, military combat, uh, bombs and IEDs uh, by terrorists, and um, now we're going to talk about blast mechanics and injury mechanisms. So these are the mechanisms of blast injury. There's uh, first degree blast injury, uh, then there's second degree which is penetrating trauma, third degree which is blunt trauma, fourth degree which are the associated injuries, and then there's contamination. And we'll go through all of these. So primary or first degree blast injury, you have this blast wave and uh, blast wind. So the magnitude of the blast wave uh, is dependent on the type of explosive, the amount of explosive, the distance from the point of origin, and there are two types of explosives uh, in, in order of uh, sort of energy involved, high order versus low order explosives, but there's also solid versus liquids, commercial versus improvised, and high order explosives include uh, these examples, TNT, nitroglycerin, C4, modium nitrate, they generate a shock wave, uh, blast wave, and uh, essentially these are supersonic and you get overpressurization uh, impulse that we'll show a little bit later. And then you get this wind, this forced superheated airflow. Low order explosives include gunpowder, petroleum based bombs, um, and they are a subsonic explosion. There's no associated blast wave, although you may have a blast wind uh, with these. Now, these are just some examples of high order and low order explosives, uh, common uses uh, that they're normally used for. And then uh, here you can see some examples uh, of some actual uh, uh, bombings that occurred that uh, can be linked to these types of explosives. So here's an example of uh, what you may see from blast injury. Thermal injuries uh, very close to the actual explosion, uh, then blast injuries, fragment penetrating injuries, um, and uh, depending on how far you are from the detonation, the mechanism can change. So blast waves form when you know, a solid or liquid fuel is rapidly converted into a gaseous state at detonation. And that high pressure gas expands at supersonic velocity into the surrounding medium, which is usually air, uh, at atmospheric pressure. Uh, and as an example, TNT de uh, detonates at 7,000 meters per second. So here's a photograph of, uh, you know, of an explosion, basically milliseconds post explosion. And you see this sort of thin crust of compressed air um, you know, at, the, in this, at this arrow. Um, and that comprises the shock wave, or here it's actually visible. And then you can also see the zone of thermal injury, which is where the flames are, obviously. So blast wave formation um, causes nearly instantaneous increases in pressure, density, and temperature occur across the shock, and this causes tissue damage. Uh, and then the under pressure behind the blast wave creates this suction effect. And that's what creates the uh, blast wind. So in a typical blast wave, you will have um, something looking like this. And we're going to show a few uh, graphs uh, where you're going to see this, uh, this type of uh, phenomenon, pressure uh, versus time. And uh, this impulse is uh, basically what's under the, uh, under the curve. And uh, this is the uh, pressure exerted during a blast wave. You can see that there's actually a negative phase as well. So as the blast wave expands, its strength decreases until it eventually dissipates. Um, like sound waves, blast waves can reflect off solid surfaces and actually bounce back. Uh, they can turn corners. 
Uh, they can uh, travel faster in fluids than in gases. I mean, water is incompressible. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a, the, the amplification occurs because you know, there's a reflection off of uh, solid objects like walls, the floor, the ceiling, and these are called reflected impulses. Uh, and those reflected impulses can cause injuries to victims remote from the blast site. Um, so this actually can get uh, a little bit complicated. So with the blast wave injury, uh, there's pressure gradients that generate high tensile and shear stresses that are sufficiently, or I'm, that, I'm sorry, that are su sufficient to traumatically amputate limbs from the blast wave itself. Uh, and then, of course, there can be thermal damage near the uh, point of origin of the actual detonation. Blast wave injury can uh, cause immediate death with full body disruption near the point of origin and immediate death uh, without apparent injury uh, just due to damage to internal hollow or solid organs. And uh, uh, the, the blast wave essentially propagates as stress, shock, and shear waves. Um, and um, uh, there's areas of density differentials that are susceptible, especially air-filled organs or air-fluid interfaces. So hollow organs are most susceptible, lungs, GI tract. Uh, solid organs can lacerate or rupture like the liver, spleen, or kidney. And then you can also get traumatic brain injury um, from this uh, blast wave injury as well. So here's uh, just sort of a uh, table. Uh, you can pause the video here if you want to look this over, uh, going over all the uh, injuries that can occur with each organ system. So as I mentioned, uh, blast lung um, is uh, the most common fatal injury among uh, survivors, uh, depending on who you read. Uh, some actually say maybe it's a secondary or tertiary injury, uh, but uh, blast lung is the most common cause of death. Um, the alveolar membrane damage results in pulmonary edema, and you get a picture similar to uh, ARDS. Uh, you get this characteristic uh, like butterfly pattern on chest x-ray. So um, chest x-ray is usually recommended for all exposed persons, um, and oftentimes if blast lung is suspected, a prophylactic chest tube may be necessary. So anybody who's got dyspnea, cough, hemoptysis, chest pain following blast exposure should be uh, suspected and uh, symptoms have been reported as late as 48 hours after the explosion. So uh, you want to look for this and uh, obviously don't, don't, don't miss it. Blast gut um, is another injury. The colon is the most commonly injured visceral structure. Um, you can get a mesenteric infarct from that shearing uh, and acceleration, deceleration injury, and it could present as a late bowel perf. So casualties with a mechanism of injury uh, that suggest this should be observed 24 hours and uh, make sure you don't miss any delayed injury. So you can unfortunately also get a tympatic membrane rupture, uh, which occurs in 1% at uh, 5 PSI overpressure and 99% 45 PSI overpressure. Um, it's been found not to be a reliable marker for other primary blast injuries though. Traumatic amputation, uh, as I mentioned, can occur from the primary blast injury. Uh, it can be from the blast wave or uh, blast wind. Um, near the point of origin or as uh, in the path of the blast wave. Penetrating trauma can also cause amputation um, with um, both types of uh, explosives near the point of origin and uh, that's where you can have the most high concentration of projectiles and sometimes it's just hard to know whether it was from the blast wave itself or from a projectile. So um, uh, for, unfortunately, landmines are a very common source of uh, traumatic amputation around the world. Um, and you can see examples here uh, with uh, the sort of uh, blast injuries that can occur with these. And um, uh, the amputation level uh, typically is uh, through the bone, not the joint.
So here's another example going back a little bit um, to uh, 1998. This is uh, Omog uh, bla uh, bomb blast, um, which was uh, the worst attack in uh, over 30 years of fighting in Northern Ireland. Uh, 29 were killed. Um, so uh, blast wave amputations. Um, this is data from the Ireland experience uh, in, in Northern Ireland. Um, most blast-related amputation victims die on the scene from other blast injuries, but in the survivors, um, if you have blast-related traumatic amputation, it's a marker for other life-threatening injuries. Uh, and, and this experience uh, reported f there were 52 blast-related traumatic amputations and only nine survived. So uh, what about reflected blast waves? We talked about this uh, in, um, uh, a little bit earlier in, uh, when we talked about blast wave mechanics. Uh, so again, blast waves can reflect off of solid surfaces. Uh, you can have uh, multiple reflections in a closed space. So as an example, the blasts in the London Underground in 2005 were particularly devastating because of this double effect of the enclosed subway car coupled with the walls of the tunnel. Um, so, uh, you know, this, this is something that can cause a severe amount of damage uh, in, in a space like this. So here you can see example of uh, reflected blast waves um, shown here on the right. Okay, so reflected blast waves, they essentially result in wave crossing the patient multiple times as it degrades in strength. So as opposed to here, here you get this um, effect and the end result is a higher impulse, right? So remember the impulse is this area under the curve, okay? And you can just see how much greater that is because of the reflected blast waves, okay? So higher energy, uh, higher amount of energy imparted to the patient. So. Jerusalem and uh, Israel has a history of multiple bus bombings over the past three decades. Uh, here you can see uh, a bombing in uh, 1996, killing 18 and uh, injuring uh, many others. Uh, this was an uh, uh, example of a bus bombing. So that's an example of where you can have these um, uh, reflected waves uh, causing additional injury. So um, similar observations were found among casualties of the Irish Republican Army bombings in the United Kingdom, um, where you had uh, in bus explosions uh, particularly lethal um, experiences, unfortunately. So what about the blast wind? Well, um, this occurs with um, both types of explosives, more so with the uh, uh, higher ones. The uh, uh, blast wind follows a blast wave uh, with uh, high velocity and high temperature and it reverses direction during uh, the under pressure phase shown in those graphs previously. So here you can see uh, an example of the uh, blast wind and that sort of suction that occurs. So you have this you know, shock front coming this way and then you suddenly have the suction going this way. Okay. So the blast wind can cause additional wounding and penetrating trauma from debris causes additional contamination and uh, you know can end up causing uh, partial amputations to become complete amputations. So I'm um, going to pause here and uh, we're going to talk about um, the rest of the uh, forms of or degrees of blast injury in the uh, next video. Thank you.